guys, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at quite a few locomotives. It's the Atherin P42 recent release of all the heritage fleet of the P42s Amtrak has produced. There's a lot of these locomotives to look at. And it keeps going, and it keeps going, and it keeps going. The actual Phase 4 B or phase five, I should say there. Um, and then we have the veterans unit, which is a Amtrak store exclusive to take a look at. So lots of P42s coming out of Atherin and lots to take a look at. MSRP on these is $124.98, but you will find them on the internet at good online retailers for as low as 90, mid 90s to upper 90s. So pretty good deals out there to be had on these ready to roll locomotives. Atherin's made some changes, lots to cover, so let's get started on the review of the Atherin P42 right now. So let's go ahead and unbox one of these guys and take a look at what's inside. These are ready to roll city series, DCC quick plug or DCC ready. I'll explain that more in a minute. Just some literature, Atherin flyer. And then your exploded parts breakdown, which is actually a sheet that's just stuck in here. This review is going to take a long time because we have a lot of stuff to cover. So, just got a whole bunch of ballast on this plastic here. Get that out of the way and go over to the actual locomotive. take a closer look at what you get. I'm gonna do something a little bit different here. We're gonna start on one side with this Amtrak Heritage Unit number 156 and then I'm gonna transition over to the Veterans Unit so people can take a look at that and we'll go and view the other side of that. So the front of the locomotive has windshield wipers as you see there. It's got an ice skate antenna. You've got actual lights, incandescent bulbs in both the headlight and over here in the ditch lights above the MU receptacles there. There are no lights in here on these little areas here, but you can always do your custom deal if you want. You've got the window, the window here, the cab window with a mirror installed. You've got the snow plow, obviously, McHenry plastic couplers. You've got the dynamic brake intake fan grills. You've got no lift ring detail. This is ready to roll, but you do have uh, molded on detail. You've got the horn up top. You've got the exhaust and you got some fan grills in the back here and the radiator fan and fan grill on the back with see-through detail uh, with that three dimensional. It's not just a sticker or anything. You got the exhaust here. May have already mentioned that. It's been a long day. I don't know. Then you've got the back, which has more incandescent bulbs back there, um, and they do operate when you're in reverse. And another McHenry coupler, along with some more uh, road number or cab number detail. So let's go ahead and change out the units to the veterans unit. A veterans unit come in a limited edition box here. You've got uh, numbered all the way up to 800. You've got this nice stars and stripes detail along the edge. And you've got the actual symbol on the side of the unit, also on the box, Atherin logo, all sorts of goodies. Now I actually installed an Ekonami sound decoder. You'll see a review of that coming up, but you can hear it in this video here. So here's the veterans unit. I'm gonna do a quick 360 spin for you. Then we'll pick up where we left off on the review, the other side. They seem to have pretty good weight we are skipping weight and pulling power because of the length of the video and all the demo, all the different schemes I need to show you guys. But picking up where we left off on the other side here, you have a lot more detail to pick up on, including some more fangirls. Got a window here, plastic window. You got grab irons that um, are separately applied. They're not molded on there. You've got the nice salutes our veterans, uh, Americans Railroad, America's Red Railroad salutes our veterans on the side. All these different 
colors here are various service ribbons that veterans can get or have had. Um, I believe all those ribbons are actually tied in with campaigns. I recognize some of them being active duty, but I do not recognize all of them. You got a nice American flag there, the nice blue and white star field at the bottom. The ladder is painted to match the blue and white. And the number 42, you got the icicle, uh, ice skate antenna, not icicle antenna, um, up top. And you've got Beach Grove, if you look very closely. Oops, it's going to go into infinity focus here, but right here, Beach Grove is written on the side. That's accurate for the real thing as well. Front, same as uh, the other unit I showed you guys with the incandescent sand. Windshield wipers, McHenry couplers, blue snowplow, obviously, instead of the other color. But that is the Amtrak Veterans Unit. That's available only through Amtrak Store, but it was produced by Ather. So here are all the schemes, phase one through five, and then the Veterans Unit here. Phase one, just want to quickly show you guys all the different schemes here. Really, you can have all of these for the price of a nice steam locomotive at under $100 a piece, street price. That's phase one, phase two. There's two phase threes, number 145 and 822 there. As I play Vanna White or Vanna Brown, the Brown version of Vanna White or, I don't know, Vanna Brown, James Brown, whatever. I'm just kind of demonstrating these for you. Phase four, number 184. Real nice. I, I really like that one. Probably one of my favorites. Phase five, the current heritage, or the current phase. It's not part of the heritage units, actually. Then we looked at the Salute Your Veterans, uh, the Veterans unit here, as part of the overview. So I won't spend too much more time on these. I just wanted to demonstrate all the phases. Do it somewhat quickly to show you guys what you're dealing with and what you're getting, really, because all of these... You know, seven locomotives, you're talking about 700 bucks, and that's the price of some of the higher price steam now. So, pretty good deal. And we'll show you some more D, uh, tricks. All these will get DCC um, and sound on some of them. Maybe all of them, it just depends. But that's what we're looking at. So, here we have the locomotive. I'm going to go to 128 speed steps on my MRC Prodigy Wireless here. I'm going to kick up to one. And some of this is going to be attributed to decoder control of the Eco Nami Eco 100. It's two, three, four, five. Very smooth. I'm going to go backwards for a second here because I want to show you. <coughs> And on the Eco 100, you've got ditch lights that flash. You can set up to flash when the horn sounded, so I'll do that real quick. That is the K5 Ballet, but that's the one that you find on P42s the most, and FDL 16 Prime Mover on the Econami. There's the bell. Again, you have to install this yourself. These locomotives are not equipped. I'm going to go ahead and silence the sounds so you can hear them drive. Makes a little noise, but not much. That's now six, seven, eight, nine, ten speed steps. I'm going to flip it into reverse here. And we're going to just start off at 10 and move on up. So basically, the drive is pretty smooth in the actual locomotive. It's um, partially attributed to the Eco, but the drive itself in DC mode, um, from what I've tested on these off camera, is pretty smooth as well. 
and we're going to show you how to install a simple cheap DCC solution as well before moving on to our recap. Very rarely do I show the insides of locomotives on my reviews, there's just not a lot of time. Um, but here you have a Digitrax DH126D decoder. This has nine pins in it, and you can simply plug it directly into that quick plug that I was telling you about in the beginning of the video. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and install this and just show you guys how cheap and easy it is to get DCC in your locomotives for a really good price and quickly done. These foam cradles are great because you can put your parts in it. You don't have to damage your locomotive on some rough stuff around your layout. Get the coupler boxes out here. You got the little bracket to put the screws in and all your parts. And you're just going to lift. Now the guts are exposed of this. Sorry for the train gore, but you will see the flywheels, all-wheel drive system in this. And then up here, you'll see this little nub. Now this is a dummy plug for the quick plug, and you're going to have to work this out. This always takes me a minute too because I've got to be careful. You, you don't want to dismount any of these wires from the board or you've got to do some soldering work. So being all at a funny angle in front of the camera doesn't work so well. Now, before I go on, I do need to warn you. You saw me struggling getting the shell off a little bit. There's a couple things I want to talk to you about the shell. The ladders here, they just plug in. They've got these little brackets that plug in. Sometimes they're not glued down properly. They will pop off. They will break. You will lose them. Be careful. To get the shell off easily, what you're going to want to do, though, is work around these ladders because there's little brackets that catch on four points of the shell and you just actually pull away from the shell with fingernails or anything you can get under there without damaging your paint and pull it away. Again, very awkward and difficult to do at an angle in front of a camera here. So you want to get a good grip on this plug and use all your force pulling away from here. Sometimes these things are on really snug. You may even have to get in there and pry it with a flathead small screwdriver, but you just want to retain all the force from coming from here so you're pulling this this way and pulling this this way just don't pull too much because these wires are fragile now we've got the dummy plug off we can take just this little blue piece from this Digitrax DH126D here and you're going to line it up you see that the pins here are towards the top or bottom they're not in the middle so you want to line them up with how these are so right now I've got it top and top, line it up, and that is the beauty of a quick plug. So again, this is a tight squeeze, you're going to have to work it in in order to get it all the way seated. We'll close this back up and operate with the quick plug for just a moment before going to the recap. Okay, this is the first time I'm running this. Got the headlight control with F0, so that's good. Um, everything is hooked up to one, so you're going to get the ditch lights and the headlight with the way we hook this up. I'm going to go ahead and move this at one speed step. Nothing. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's move it along. Not a whole lot of motor noise. I haven't screwed with the start voltage or anything, so I don't know what this Digitrax DH126 decoder is capable of. But I will tell you that it is a value decoder. It's probably not the most um, prestigious decoder out there or smoothest running because it's only 17 bucks each. It's a one and a half amp to two amp peak. It's got two functions and it's a fits a whole bunch of different locomotives but but that main thing is the nine pin that's what I wanted to show you guys well guys that wraps up the review of the Atherin P42 covered a ton today between the schemes installing a quick plug decoder um, I skipped the actual pull test 
and the weight, but it's 15.9 ounces, 0.452 kilograms, or 452 grams for the weight. And then the pull test came in at 2.1 uh, ounces of pull, which is on the lower end of the things that I've pull tested in diesels, um, but not bad, not the lowest I've seen by any means. You probably need a couple of these to pull the Walders superliners, which are heavy. Uh, the double um, locomotives pulling that would probably be better, but it's also prototypical most times anyway. So that's what you're looking at. With that said, guys, thanks for watching. Again, MSRP. 124.98. You can find it any all day long, around 90 to 100 dollars on the internet. Uh, we'll leave you with a run by, and we'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.